time, so I wanted to start a new series of Blitz videos, videos that are not longer than 3-4 minutes with just pure, uh, solid uh, information that I think they're useful for people that I work with and for friends. So let's talk temporary abutments. Biologic width, quick, quick summary, three things, sulcar epithelium, long junction epithelium, and connective tissue. The main role is to protect the underlying bone. It seems to be longer in dimensions comparing to the biologic width around teeth. And we know it forms immediately upon uncovery of the implant. So it is really important to start thinking what are we really placing when we're uncovering the implant, especially if we're placing custom healer abutments or temporary uh, restorations. This is two things I'd like to focus today. A lot of things about temporary abutments, but, but these are the two things I would like to draw your attention. The emergence angulation, which is basically the angulation between the body of the abutment and the prosthetic margin, and the transmucosal height. The distance between the implant platform and the prosthetic margin of the abutment. In the posterior areas where the scalloping is less, the height can potentially be less. Of course, it really depends on the depth of placement and the tissue thickness. In the anterior zone, especially we're talking about immediate implants, the biologic width there tends to be longer since the implants are deeper and the transmucosal height needs to be able to accommodate that by being also increased and removing away from the bone interface the prosthetic margin. I summarized in this slide three random companies that tend to be very popular. Nobel Biocare offers temporary engaging abutments for the conical connection implants that have heights that range from 1.5 to 3 millimeters. And again, I'm referring to the transmucosal height. Strauman offers gingiva height from 1.5 to 3.5 millimeters for the temporary abutments for the bone level implant. BioHorizons offers 2 millimeters for the 3 platform and 1.5 millimeters from all for all other platforms. That may become an issue, especially if we're placing a, a, a platform that's different in the aesthetic zone as an immediate solution. This is a temporary restoration, looks beautiful, makes for a good Instagram photograph, but if you look closely enough, you will see that the temporary abutment in which the, the temp is built upon is very short and the angulation, although it is not as pronounced, it is just too close to the uh, implant uh, level and the bone. This is the clinical presentation. You take a photograph, it's not zero all the way. It's not zero all the way because the transmucosal height cannot accommodate the depth of the implant placement in the proximally. We don't know exactly from this two-dimensional photograph or x-ray where the buccal bone is. We know though that in approximately we will be deeper, especially if we're placing immediate implants. So in circumstances like that, we require not only temp abutments that have very long transmucosal uh, heights, but also very skinny and or narrow transmucosal heights if we're working on implant level. Because there are systems such as the MIS that potentially with the use of the connect abutment, we can work on abutment level. So in a situation like that, we want to be on the, th on the third, on the top green line. We don't want to be on the red line in order to prevent crossing of the bone and bone loss eventually. If we are to use the same provisional, at the very least, we need to be able to adjust the flaring of the abutment in order to be able to passively fit it on the implant and create enough space for the tissues. This is a temporary abutment that is used to support a custom healing abutment. The transmucosal height is in harmony with the bone level and the soft tissue thickness and the angulation, the emergence angle, is also in harmony with the bone level and it doesn't crush the bone upon placement. A common sense approach uh, like that will basically prevent any type of biologic width formation which has to form but it will prevent biologic width formation in expense of the bone. 
So, takeaway points. Less acute emergency angulations for temporary copings. We need to look at the radiographs. And the lab sometimes may need to look at the radiographs. In the aesthetic zone where scalloping is more pronounced, definitely consider increased heights of temporary abutments like 3 or 3.5 or even more uh, heights for those temporary abutments. This is going to be part one. I'm going to come back with a part two for the final abutments. And that can be an entire day of presentation, but I'm going to try and condense in three, four minutes. Hope that was useful to you. Talk to you all soon.